Alabama lawmakers shocked the world today with a bold new initiative amending the legal classification of consensual incest from the previous charge of gross misconduct to a newly coined legal distinction of good old-fashioned fun. (laughs) Well, if you wanted honesty, you've come to the wrong place. (laughs) This is the disinformed podcast i'm shane i'm john and i'm michael hey can i get a roll tide roll Roll tide tide. (laughs) thank you that's all i want (laughs) gentlemen how is this dirge of a week treating the both of you i feel uh, perpetually that i'm just the margot lyric of i'm alive i'm alive and that's the best that i can do you know i couldn't concur more i want to put that on my gravestone (laughs) that's literally what like so when people like walk into the store, it's like, hey, what's up, guys? Welcome in. How you doing? They're like, oh, we're good. How are you? It's like, oh, I'm alive. <laughs> it's all I can hope for. I, I used to respond to that question that I was breathing. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure if you were around long enough to have, have caught that wave of Shane. But yeah, they just like, how are you doing? I'm breathing. Like, oh, well, that's good. It's like, nah, I consider it a bad habit. I've been trying to cut down. It's not working out so well. I think my, I, I think I missed that one, but because when I met you, I was a smoker. My favorite Shaneism still to this day is we'd be out on like a, on a patio, like at a bar and I would be smoking. You'd be hanging out. We'd just be chatting and someone would like either would offer you a cigarette or something like, oh, do you smoke? And Shane would always just go only when you set me, only if you set me on fire. Yeah, only if you light me on fire. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> still and I, think I might smolder. <laughs> it's you know, it's rough living with me. It really is. I, I tried, but you know, it's it's difficult. I can't separate it, unfortunately. <laughs> Comes stuck with, with the territory. Me. Yeah, I, unless I really hit that schizophrenia real hard, it's I'm gonna be stuck doing this for another at least three years. I I heard I heard something, and since you live ten years in the future. Um, I heard that when you turn 30, that's like your personality, your traits, everything that you've done, the moment that you turn 30, that's solidified. Like there's no hitting an undo button on your personality at that point. So like up to that point, it's the tutorial mode. And then yeah, once you hit 30, that's like what you got for the rest of your life. Yeah. If you want to do like a Dark Souls 3 thing, like up until you're 30, you're just doing that beginning area. And then, like, you beat the big guy with the sword, and the moment you go through the double doors after getting the key, that's 30. Uh, I I mean, we're not counting the midlife crisis in there at all. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to say no to that. Okay, so that's the first bullshit of our episode. I mean, I'm still changing my underwear at this age, and, uh, you know, you'd never expect anything less. It's better well, than a go. diaper. So. Um, you'd hope. <laughs> True. <laughs> it's the uh what is the joke from predator 2 is like i was at the doctor's office and they told me like hey i need to get a stool urine and semen sample from me he's like hey doc i'm kind of in a bit of a hurry can i just leave my underwear <laughs> <laughs> i like it uh so michael i heard that uh last week's episode converted you oh ah uh, yes yes i wish i wish i had a proof of said thing but um i might try and show it next week um, but yes, I am technically a card carrying member of the Satanic Temple. Um, I even bought the card. That makes three Mainly of us. because you just wanted to flex. Oh, for real? Oh, well, yeah, I, I wasn't kidding. I, I'm going to start having cross affiliations with every other religion. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. Um, well, maybe, gosh, speaking of like from last week, like holiday ideas for you guys, maybe it's time for you to get the Satanic Temple mugs too. Maybe that's the, uh, the little... Maybe that's the Christmas gift, or mm. you know, our Satan Christmas to each other. I was actually hoping to, uh, you know, gift each of you with like a full Baphomet head mask that we can wear when we go out in public. <laughs> oh, please! I would wear that without a skip, without a I beat. Hope, I'm Wait. hoping to wear it to work so I can continue to intimidate these mouth-breathing imbeciles that I have to deal with <laughs> on a daily. Yeah. <laughs> You're not lying, man. There's so many people still, like, you would assume that this is, like, week one of mask mandates. And, like, with how perplexed people are, like, whether you agree with it or not, I have this guy, and he's a semi-regular customer. And by semi-regular, I mean, like, he comes in either, like, once a week or once every other week. Um, And I've had a, like, 
decent amount of loathing for this guy for years. Is this the guy that like showed up with a, a like a bucket or something like that for a mask? No. Or, or like he fashioned his own one, not that guy? No, that's just some old fuck who's just trying to tempt fate. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> this guy, this guy's one of the the uh, cool guys, uh, long hair, prog metal dude, probably in his forties. Like he doesn't think that any other genre exists. Like he likes to scott. Like he's the douchebag metal fan, like stereotypical. Uh, or it's like the Rush fan. Uh, pretty Ooh. much, like no other genre has existed. Okay, and if you try to tell him otherwise, it's a it's a laughable debate. And every time he's been in during the mask mandate, he pretends just like the bucket or the gallon jug old guy mask. Like he pretends that he forgets that it's needed. So he'll get to the front door. He's like, hey, you got a mask, man? And the like, oh, and he'll walk back to his lifted truck and he'll come back with one of the gators or whatever. Uh, is that how it is? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. And those, uh, according gators. to our arguments, are not viable as masks where we're at. Wait, what do you mean gators? The little neckerchief thing that you pull up. Oh, where they're pretty yeah. much like just neckerchief. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Like face shield things? I wear that at work. Is that not good? They say oh, that shit. there's a difference between... I would look it up. I can't speak accurately to it in the moment. But essentially, if I understand it correctly, it's not that... It's it's a, the amount of layering. Uh, I have no idea why you're showing me a condom, Michael. That's terrifying. That is terrifying. It That's, is a gargantuan size. It's not for my dick. It's for the other head. Oh, Why does it well. say ribbed for her displeasure? That's <laughs> well. When you're charging head first in, it's it's not going to be fun for either party. But well, listen. when you're hashtag cucked by God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, so he has like a gator thing, and he'll oh oh yep. There's a little pee noise. That's a, that's a beer being filled. Um, oh good. As oh, I thought you were peeing yourself. I wish. Only a couple years away. Oh, give me another two minutes here. I'll get there. So when he goes back to get his mask or his gator, like, he comes into the store without putting it on and then, like, makes a meal out of putting it on while still walking into the store. Now, for context, back in the day, like, or, like, last month, rather, it's just me in there, usually, and then, like, one or two people at a time shopping. So it's one of those, like, choose your battles and I disinfect everything in between every guest anyway. But now we have people sitting down. You know, like, if it's, we're compliant. As long as you buy food, we can serve you a pint. I have everything very, very to a ruler, like, distanced out and, and planned. So if you walk in that way, you're effectively then just, like, being discourteous to everyone around you. Not just me. Like, I, I can get over it. So he pulls this maneuver, like, a couple days ago, uh, earlier this week. And he's halfway through halfway into my store at this point, and I, I'm about to round the corner and I realize it's happening, I poke my head around and like, hey, my man, you need to have that on before you come to our store. Hands down. Like, no exceptions. He goes, huh, it's not a big deal, don't worry about it. I was like, uh, it actually kind of is. And I don't know how I've, maybe it's just because like we live, like working around people right now is infinitely more stressful than it's ever been. Right. But for some reason, I, I'm not as much of an asshole as I expected myself to be. Um, so my delicately worded response was, Hey, whether or not you like it or you don't like it, you wearing the mask keeps us compliant and it keeps our doors open. So if you like shopping here, you need to play it exactly mm. how it is. Preach. And he was like, well, I mean, as long as you don't have an underlying condition, it should be fine. I was like, that doesn't matter, man. That's not what I'm talking about. Oh, but man, uh, my sister was having a drink at the bar and I could see her eyes just like almost popping out of her skull because she is not uh she does not care to avoid confrontation especially if she has like no personal connection to the like she doesn't work for bottle shop like right i was like you know what i would have really loved to to get her like riled up and like fucking like just slice the dude's jugular oh that would be great to see but anyway yeah we were all like recounting before we hit hit record about our various uh maskless encounters or like people at our own respective jobs and i just felt like this guy needed just to get a good spotlight on as a uh, as cunt of the week uh which Agreed. i which yes. i'm cribbing from in case in case anyone's listening from that it's a podcast another local podcast called in separate rooms which is a nice little conversational one if you ever want to check something something else out nice. in addition cool. to our podcast 
So Yeah, I have reached the point where I'm not sure if you gentlemen enjoy a candle every now and again, like the modern man does. Uh, but uh, you, the little, like, lighters that have kind of the, the trigger on them so it's it's like the, a the, not yeah, quite a not, big lighter but the extended like a you know candle lighter basically yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. a, a long I, a long I, lighter yes yes oh, i okay, plan okay, on okay, just okay. walking around with one of those little lighter guns in my pocket at all times and i'm just gonna start lighting people up <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> is if you don't if you're not wearing the mask the appropriate way i'm just gonna catch the back of your hair just ever so lightly until either it singes or you just erupt into flame. And this is how I'm going to start curbing that behavior. Because it's really oh, the only sure. appropriate way. No, I agree. Uh, also, Michael, for your question about whether or not the gator that you're wearing is uh, appropriately effective. I watched the, or this video came up. I think it was like a TikTok or some shit. Um, but it was a dude with different kinds of masks. Uh, and he'll put, he'll put the mask on and then he'll light a lighter. And he'll try to blow the, the flame out. Uh, oh, okay. Through the mask, so you could try that with your gator. That seems to be, you know, a good indication, a non scientific yeah. approach. <laughs> but I mean, it it's it's pretty scientific because the whole idea is whether or not you have enough force with your sneeze. Oh, shut up! I'm not going into detail. Because <laughs> if you sneeze harder than you blow, I'm assuming <laughs> fill in joke there. Yeah, whatever. Don't care. Um, so if you can blow out a match or a lighter or whatever. Uh, then you can definitely sneeze with enough force to blow that out, which means you can carry your shit further. Are you the trying only to say? Why... Sorry, what I was going to say. Are you trying to say that if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball? Yeah, I am not going to in any way, shape, or form endorse a Ben Stiller quote <laughs> to be included in this podcast. And I'm going to call it. I'm swiping that down right now. Not even that one. <laughs> I feel like that one is is is. If you tell me that is the least offensive of any of his cinematic offerings, my friend, no. I will strangle you no. to death. I wasn't going to say that. I was going to say it's it's one of the more applicable ones. Guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> my brain, hey, man. Let's let's try something new here. Um, and I'm not talking Being about... Funny? I'm not talking about anal. No. <laughs> That's too much effort, man. I can't do that. <laughs> I would say, like, around the first 15 minutes of the show is, like, when you should say, like, if you enjoy what you end up listening to, you should find us. Like, the, the social plugs early on instead of at the end. So, in case you uh, outwardly hate us, you can go tell us early and not late. Yeah, yeah. You're trying to catch the people that, you know, start listening and then give up as opposed to... You know, the ones that go yes. all the way through. Because obviously they're they're going to be the ones who dedicate the time to go and try to find us on a social network. <laughs> that that makes all the sense in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like hatred's <laughs> going to be the same for us 15 minutes in as it is an hour in. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> for the three of you who aren't going to go like us on these pages, you can find us on Facebook.com slash Disinformed Podcast, on Instagram at Disinformed Podcast, and on Twitter at Disinformed Pod. I guarantee that our numbers are not going to increase one motherfucking iota, and that no. we will still have five likes for every post, four of which involve Army. a page I manage, yeah, and the other being John. Yeah, because so. I forget so much. See, if Michael can't even be bothered to like shit, how <laughs> exactly know. can we expect it's the so listeners fun. to care? At the very least, too. We do a video podcast companion called Disinformed After Dark every Friday, mm -hmm. uh, 10 a.m. What time, Shane? Oh, it, well, it's mountain time. Yeah. Uh, so that's Disinformed Podcast on, on YouTube. We don't have a unique URL because I looked it up. You need 100 subscribers and we are just about 98 shy. So. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I am one of those, though. I subscribe oh, wow. to our YouTube we channel. Have more than, we have more than two. Well, yeah, you subscribe, but you don't interact or like watch any or rewatch anything. You don't proof. You're more guilty than <laughs> I am now that I think about it. Like I at least now have been like I've actually put effort in and outside. I'm not saying that you don't put effort. You edit the show, but. <laughs> At least I watch every every disinformed after dark just because sometimes I forget what we talked about because it's almost a week and a half out all the time. I was gonna say Michael of any of us I think has like seven dedicated listens to every episode by the time he finishes editing. So I'm not going to browbeat him for not wanting to consume it, you know, after it's been created. 
since he is technically, you know, the savior of the show. As by your admission and mine, he has made this far more listenable than it would be otherwise. Yeah, and if you want to test that, try listening to episode one, Dixieland, and then come back and listen to this episode right now. It's <laughs> leaves and bounds. I tried, uh, not tried, uh, one of the co-hosts Fail. from In Separate Rooms uh, was in, in the bar yesterday, and I didn't tell him that we had a podcast, but, you know, afterwards, like when I got home from work last night, I threw a follow to his page and then went on our Instagram page for Disinformed and followed them and everything, um, but I was... Just like trying to get like helpful advice or like give some advice to him as well, like if he needed it, because I I think they're relatively new. I think they're nine episodes in, and I was like, yeah. So how do you guys like record? Uh, you know, in these times, like, do you do Zoom or you know, do you do you use Anchor and it it does the whole thing for you? Do you have like an editor? And he fucking dunked on me so hard, and he didn't know that he dunked on me because I didn't tell him that I had a podcast with you guys. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> so here's what I get. He goes. Well, actually, you know, like I used to, you know, I used to write and play music a lot and I got really into audio and I have a pretty ridiculous setup. Like I'm talking like condenser, condenser mics and whatever. And, uh, you know, I'm not really good at mixing or editing, but I have a buddy and I pay him to do it uh, for, for each episode or, or I, you know, give him a beer or something. And I listen to that podcast and Michael, you make us sound just as good. Oh, cool. In in my in my opinion, I'm not saying you can definitely tell that we don't have condent like twelve hundred dollar mics. Yeah, but it doesn't sound like I'm recording on a potato. So my work is worth a, a beer. That's what I. Hear. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say. I just watched Michael clench up like he was preparing for you to impregnate him, and then when you actually complimented him, he, you know, he just like he didn't know how to respond. Uh, yeah, I shut down for a moment there. It's I like had a to dog reload. that you have beat for forty-seven years, and then anytime you raise your hand, it skittishly runs across the room. That's if, Michael. If there's one thing that I'm learning uh, in my extremely late twenties. It's that whenever somebody expects me to do something, I hate doing it. So now that everyone expects me to punch Michael throughout every episode, I'm trying to leaven in some compliments and like flip the script mm-hmm. on it. But don't get used to it, Michael, because eventually I, was I will. I going to say, retaliate. but no one likes that though. People come here to watch me get dunked on. So I mean, you assume that, and then we constantly have people pointing out, like, "Oh, poor Michael," or "Oh, I feel bad for Michael." Like. You wouldn't be listening to this show if we were not ceaselessly haranguing Michael. It would just be a string of 47 minutes of incoherent rambling nonsense, occasionally punctuated by the casual mk, and uh, John and I would both be just drooling out the sides of our mouths. <laughs> well, I don't get it. I forget. Is it? It's Shane's topic today, right? It is. And uh, to crib from as good as it gets, you make me want to be a better man. Okay. Why? (laughs) (laughs) Why? What'd you do? We want to up listenership at some point here, hopefully. So if, you know, if if we need to save this podcast, you know what we need? We need a hero. Oh. And I've got, I got a hero for us this week, gentlemen. So, this week we will be discussing the charismatic enigma that is Phoenix Jones. But before we do that, for the uninitiated, what we typically will do here is that we will discuss or submit for your approval a random esoteric topic, and in the course of the presenter explaining it to the co-hosts, we will occasionally leaven in a lie or two, and it is then incumbent upon the co-hosts to then separate the fact from the fiction, call out the lies in situ, hauler posse, and interloper interchangeably. And uh, unfortunately, though, regardless of whether they get them or not, as evidenced by last week's episode, there are no points, and we do not respect each other any more in the morning than we did in the evening prior to the exploits. In which case, it's like every relationship I've ever had. Hmm. Reasonable. Fair, yeah. Well, uh, gentlemen, this week I actually have a preamble, and Michael, oh, I know that this is going to be lost on you from the moment that I Is this start. for me? All right, tuning out. So I imagine that, yes, John, you will probably be the one, and then there might be one or two listeners who will appreciate this. 
Uh, but I will, I will try to keep it succinct because I need to, but in order for the affectation, we need to have someone whistling in the background. A tumbleweed will then move across the front of the screen, and then I will say, way up in the Pacific Northwest, there's this fella. <laughs> fella I want to tell you about. It's a fella <laughs> by the name of Benjamin Fodor. At least that was the handle his loving parents gave him, but he never had much use for it himself. Mr. Fodor, he called himself Phoenix Jones. Now, Phoenix, that's not a name that anyone would self-apply where I come from. But then, there's a lot about Phoenix that just didn't make a whole lot of sense. And a lot about where he lived, likewise. But then again, maybe that's why I found the place so darned interesting. See the waves tumbling down. <laughs> they call Seattle the Emerald City. But Phoenix didn't find it to be Oz, exactly. But I'll allow he was definitely not in Kansas, either. Of course, I ain't... I can't say I've seen Kansas. And I've never been to France. I ain't never seen no queen in her damn dundies, as a fella says. But I'll tell you what. After seeing Seattle, and this here story I'm about to unfold, well, I guess I've seen something every bit as stupefying as you'd see in any of them places. And in English, too. So I can die with a smile on my face without feeling like Michael fucking gypped me. <laughs> now this here story I'm about to unfold took place in the early 2010s, just around the time of our secondary conflict with Saddam and the Iraqis. I only mention that because sometimes there's a man, I won't say a hero, because what's a hero? But sometimes there's a man. And I'm talking about Phoenix Jones here. Sometimes... <laughs> There's a man. Well, he's the man for his time and place. It fits right in there. And that's Phoenix Jones in Seattle. And even if he is a crazy man, and Phoenix Jones was most certainly that, quite possibly the craziest in King County, and that would place him high on the running for craziest statewide, but sometimes there's a man. Oh hell. I lost my train of thought here. But I done introduced him enough. So Phoenix Jones. Wait, 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 wait. Michael. Was that a hateful eight reference? Fuck me. Kill you're, me now. You're fired. <laughs> you're telling me that you What movie? Oh what what God. part about I don't know what a movie is do you not understand? This How is a reoccurring long thing here. Is it gonna take to fix what Satan screwed up with you? <laughs> Never. <laughs> uh, we're gonna leave him Satan at... made me this way, I'm staying this way. <laughs> hey Michael. Um, yes. I'm going to ask you a question here. Do you know how to keep an idiot in suspense? I'll tell you later. Uh, <laughs> anywho. So Phoenix Jones, a.k.a. Benjamin Fodor, is an American real-life superhero. Though some would be more inclined to apply the label of vigilante to our friendly neighborhood crime fighter... Uh, initially introduced to the world whilst donning a ski mask to intervene in a public assault, Fodor went on to develop a full costume and crime-fighting persona, adopting Phoenix Jones as his superhero handle. Wait, I can have a superhero name? I'll be you Pete can Jones. indeed. <laughs> you gotta just wear the tights, though, so that's a little bit of a Does he have a cape? Oh, wait for it. He does not have a cape. No capes. Oh, so he's not a complete asshole. I then. got that reference. Oh, fantastic. You like children's films. That's where you go to meet women. Uh, anywho. <laughs> Milfs, man. Tell you what. Yeah, get fucked, Michael. You're a nerd. <laughs> what? Huh? Please don't tell me. Just don't tell me what. I don't want to know. I just started talking about Milfs. How does that make me a nerd? Uh, you're not trying to pick up them. Uh, <laughs> They're trying so. to pick me? I, anyway, continue. I don't, I don't get it. Uh Every time I see his last name as well, immediately when it's Fodor, I'm always like, Fodor, Fodor, Fodor. So, Hold uh, the door. Jones was a founder and the leader of the Rain City Superhero Movement, which is not related to our urine therapy episode at all, <laughs> I assure you. <laughs> oh, but uh, it is a Seattle, Washington-based citizen patrol group. And I should say before this, I believe I have... Uh, I uh -huh. I wrote it down Ruh. in my head, and then I've changed things. So I believe. 
Should have called himself Ass Kick. I think I have six. All right. They're not going to be very elaborate. So couldn't couldn't have made it an earnest seven, huh? I mean, I wanted to. <laughs> you wanted to. <laughs> Is the movie Magnificent Seven? Uh, birds are a lie. So there, there's seven lies for you. There we go. Cool. Shut the fuck up, All Michael. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh. The Rain City Superhero Movement is a Seattle, Washington-based citizen patrol group which described itself as a crew of clandestine crime fighters seeking to end the corruption, compromising world safety. That is, is that line bullshit? I mean, obviously. No, for real. Uh, no, I... Wait, really? Now I'm confused. Yes, I lied. <laughs> ah, that line was bullshit. Sweet. Yes, uh, they are. They call themselves a crime prevention brigade. Aw, I liked your lie better. Well, you normally do. Yeah. Uh, it's what the difference between Wikipedia and my ass. Uh, so, <laughs> unlike Peter Parker's aim to protect his loved ones, or Batman's aspirations to inspire fear in the cowardly and superstitious lot of common criminals, Jones simply says his super suit is the best way to prevent his being mistaken for a criminal by authorities. <laughs> now, Listen, you laugh. I'm wearing a ski mask, so obviously I'm not committing crime. <laughs> well, I, I will describe. The ski mask was the first thing that he wore, so we'll get around to his actual outfit here. But it is important to emphasize, particularly given our current climate, that Fodor is black. So... His attempting to intervene at the scene of any crime in progress, sans getup, may prove a bit more perilous to him just based on that fact alone. It's very, something we can all fair. appreciate right now, in particular, and considering sure. this started in the you know early tens here, he was certainly a progenitor. Uh, as you would expect, the Seattle authorities have expressed concern that the costume may lead to an increasing escalation in the theatricality of the criminal element with a tangible danger of costumed criminals also arising and following Jones' example. Jones no then way, countered really? that uh, criminals cower behind masks for anonymity, and while he and his associates do not. He went on to state that it takes courage to wear a mask and a moniker, which would rule out crooks in crazy outfits. Now, what are you asking about, Michael? The cops really said this will increase the, the uh, it'll make criminals want to wear masks and stuff too. Is Obviously did they really not. say that? No. Okay, that's Shane was very forthcoming that they're not. Uh, yes, yes. Well planned. Sorry, because I'm, I'm yeah. not trying to do Inception here. You slack jawed yokel. Yeah. You're... Wait, you're just trying to entertain. Yeah, and like other people who host this podcast, huh? I'm not trying to bore everyone to tears. Yeah, I like how you you're painting. I, I, don't make me. I'll do an. I'll do another heavy water incident. I'll I'll, I'll do it. It's uh, called your heavy water therapy. incidents occur in your pants. Yeah, um, I like how you're painting with your lies like a very DC Comics Year One kind of scenario, like a Jim Gordon on the Force. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, so, yes, what uh, the actual uh, belief was is that the Seattle authorities said they want uh, to deal with get away from emergency calls from the citizens who mistake the superheroes for criminals, mm. as Got you it. would expect from masked yeah. men going around. So uh, Jones then also asserts that all members of the Rain City superhero movement have a military or mixed martial arts background, so they aren't simply a collective of kooks in suits. That's bullshit. What that the they're mixed, all, they all they're have, all mixed martial arts? They are all mixed martial artists. Oh, yes. okay. Well, I mean, at least they got that going for them. You're gonna yes, get a slap indeed. happy now because everything and now it just feels like a target rich environment. Uh, well, it is intended to. Okay. So, uh, uh, apropos, Jones is a mixed martial artist who is currently signed to the World Series of Fighting, where he has fought in several weight classes, including a fight against his older foster brother. Fighter Karos Fodor, or Keros Fodor, I don't, I'm not sure how to pronounce, uh, whom Phoenix would later jokingly give the superhero moniker Blue Corduroy. No, actually, it's Phoenix Jones versus Mars Volta. If only, uh, you would hope. <laughs> so. Um, when it says fighting, like, what, uh, is it MMA? Or, it's MMA. Or what kind of, 
Oh, okay. when I say he is a mixed martial artist, that is what the uh, letters MMA stand for, Michael. Yes, yeah, speaking speaking yes, about MMA, but I was asking be because you said he was part of uh, international fighting or something like that. World and, Series of Fighting. Yes, yes, and a so mixed I, martial artist signed to that. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, yeah, I didn't know just, that that was unclear. Sure. Yeah, it was uh, uh, to you. Okay. Yes, Captain Adderall over here. Speaking of MMA, Jesus. have uh, you guys uh, tried DMT? If only. <laughs> that uh, as of right now, Michael doesn't I'm, get the I'm considering choking Michael out. Uh, I'll tell you that much. So we'll move there. At least we got the compliments uh, yeah, out of the, the way. It's a Joe yes. Rogan reference. Um, oh. He, the man doesn't understand what MMA is, John. I don't think you're going to catch him. <laughs> I'm throwing with those Joe three Rogan references. I mean, it could have been something else other than just MMA. Except for when MMA is in the sentence that precedes it, Michael. You, you said mixed martial arts. You That could be other things. So if I refer to the NBA, what do you think I'm talking about? Yes, you said, but so you didn't then if say I the go, National, the National Basketball, Basketball, Associ- Basketball Association. <laughs> what other NBA do you correlate? Well, okay. Tell all right. me one. Hear- What's another when MMA, I- Michael? <laughs> when I hear Please. mixed martial arts, I don't, I think of just a general thing, like when someone says karate or something like that. It, I, I don't think it's like a specific, that, I'm sorry. That's just how I, that's how I think about it, okay? I don't think of mixed martial art as a specific, on, like, genre for something, okay? On today's episode of Shane and Michael, will they, won't they? Uh, oh, we will. I know where he lives, so <laughs> it's a I misconception intend... on, my... not anymore. <laughs> uh, no, I'll find out. That's fair. It's, it wouldn't be hard to find. It's but... not. Just follow the um, crying children. It's, it's Michael, you're you're lucky you edit this them. thing because I would have muted you five seconds ago, and uh, we wouldn't be having this discussion. As a matter of fact, I'm still entertaining the notion just for the sake of my own sanity. No, so. I'm sorry, that is a misconception on my part. I apologize. Oh my god, I okay. I might just die from shock. Now that we have covered mixed martial arts gate. Uh, can we get Fuck on me. with the topic? <laughs> I hope I'm so. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Michael, do you need me to explain this one more time just to make sure we're on the same page? Wait, where are we? What, what year, what year is, is, it? is it? Yes, yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, why don't you write on the fucking all... whiteboard? <laughs> that's, that's racist. Okay. So how did all this hullabaloo get started? Yes, I want so, to know. Jones claims that he sought to take policing into his own hands after several incidents left him to coin a phrase, sleepless in Seattle. Uh, The first was Joan's car being broken into, which is an aggravating enough situation on its own merits. However, to add injury to the insult, Joan's son was injured on broken glass in the automobile. Uh, While speaking with neighbors, Jones was also told that several people observed the break-in occurring, but did not intervene. So the whole Kitty Genovese uh, observe mm. or observation bias, whatever this goes with. Bystander effect. The Thank indifference you. of good men. Thank you. So yeah. there's two <laughs> perfectly reasonable things. Uh, <laughs> John got the uh, the movie reference and Michael got the factoid from you know reading his psychology manual. So <laughs> the two facets of our glorious podcast presented all in once. There you go. And how. Uh, so... Uh, A ski mask was left in the car as evidence, and unfortunately, the piece did not result in any identification of suspects. Later, uh, Jones recounts encountering a friend being seriously assaulted outside of a bar, and after Jones called 911, he donned the aforementioned ski mask and, quote-unquote, made a commotion until the police showed up. Do he you is... fucking see this is happening? Look at what is fucking happening! Look at this uh, asshole on the ground! <laughs> he is quoted as saying, I thought, why didn't somebody help him? There were 70 people standing around outside that bar, and no one did anything. Uh, if this sounds eerily reminiscent of the plot of the comic book and film Kick-Ass to you, you are not alone. To aid in Jones's crime-fighting crusade, He went on to develop a full costume and his groove and pseudonym, mind you, uh, after his various vigilante exploits made him too recognizable. So he developed an elaborate transformation procedure in league with a local business. 
in a CBS News broadcast, which I will link in the show notes and I will send you gentlemen the video once we're finished here so you can review. Jones is shown entering the back room of an unnamed comic book store via a secret panel wherein he changes into his super suit, which consists of dragon skin brand bulletproof vest with stab plating. Is that uh, bullshit? And he also, that seems way that is too not elaborate. bullshit. Nope, this is exactly how he would get ready to go out on patrol. Okay. Uh, his mask is very similar to kind of like a Batman crossed with a spawn mask is really kind of the aesthetic. So it has a mouth uh, kind of cut out, but uh, it's intimidating. I'll say that. Uh, he also is further equipped with a stun baton, hmm. which is uh, so it's actually a baton that has like uh, a cattle prod on it as a, a, oh. as a shocker. <laughs> okay. uh, a, Whoa. Pepper spray or tear gas. Uh, I, apparently, it is like a dual nozzled little spray thing that can shoot either. Ha oh, that's fancy. Handcuffs and a first aid kit to complete the ensemble. And you mm. will see him getting into this and discussing it in the video, which is fun. Yeah, Shane, do so, you... Oh, sorry. No, please, go ahead. Do you remember the Batman college humor videos? Yes, I do. And Pepperidge Farm also remembers. Ah, and so does the water. Or sparkling water. Um, do you remember the one that Patton Oswald was in? Yes, where he was the penguin? Yeah. So yes. Phoenix Jones' approach probably is going to remind me a lot to Batman in that skit where he thinks that the people that he hurts aren't really hurt. They just get... He's a really good fighter, so they just get, like, tuckered out. Uh -huh. And they have to take a nap. They sleep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> what do you think happens once these guys fall to the ground? They're sleeping. <laughs> yeah, they're just a really good fighter. They just uh, yeah, they just get all tuckered out. <laughs> oh, that's bad, man. So, here is some of his press coverage. And I'll give you just a few highlights of his exploits over the course of his time crime fighting. Uh, and we'll end with something that is very relevant to recent events. On a Sunday, uh -oh. January 2nd, 2011, in Linwood, Phoenix Jones stopped and chased away a car thief as the car owner, who asked to be only identified as Dan, stood by in shock. CBS News introduced Dan and Phoenix to one another the following Monday evening, which is the news story that I have uh, in, linked in the show notes. Oh, okay. And Dan proceeded to thank Jones numerous times while talking about Phoenix's gear. Following the foiled carjacking, ABC News aired a story uh, covering Jones. In this report, footage shows Phoenix Jones preventing an intoxicated man from entering his car. Jones threatens to use the stun baton as the angry and inebriated man approaches Jones with the intent to fight. In the video, the poli a police officer is shown later talking to Phoenix and his associates regarding the effects the mask may have on an intoxicated individual. By the way, if you're stumbling up on a, an angry drunk and you're wearing a mask, he may be more inclined to fight you, apparently. Yeah. Huh. Uh, so, uh, Saturday, September 24th, 2011, in the Belltown neighborhood of Seattle, Phoenix doused a man with pepper spray as he attempted to steal a city bus. Oof. The driver of the bus had been handing out flyers when another individual attempted to steal the bus. Jones was reported to have intervened as the hijacker escaped with his skin dyed orange due to the spray. <laughs> That's a lot of pepper spray. The gentleman also might be leading this country right now, apparently. Uh, <laughs> it's the origin story. <laughs> <laughs> All it takes is one bad day. <laughs> one bad day, one bad Cheeto. <sighs> Jones said he didn't receive any help from the Seattle police who took hours to respond to the incident. Uh, Sunday, October 11th, or Sunday, October 9th, 2011, in Seattle, Jones was arrested for his role in an altercation, also involving pepper spray. Uh, close associates who were present and equipped with a video camera told reporters that Jones broke up an unfair fight between two groups of nightclub patrons. According to the police reports, the officers who responded determined that there was no fight, uh, with one member of the group denying anyone amongst them had been fighting. They then asked that the masked man be arrested for attacking them. 
According to one woman who was involved in the altercation after an argument had broken out between her group and another, Jones suddenly approached and pepper sprayed them all, saying, <laughs> I'm a superhero. Fuck no you, way. He, re- he really said, I'm a superhero? He said, I'm a superhero. <laughs> the next day, videographer Ryan McNemi uploaded the video online showing Jones responding to what McNemi had described as a huge fight. McNamee's video shows the woman in question hitting Phoenix Jones and another person with her shoe. (laughs) Don't worry, bitch. I didn't forget about you. Uh, It's literally heels with heels, apparently. Um, (laughs) I'm a superhero. And the heel. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, Jones was released on bail hours later with no charges having been filed against him. In another incident, several hours earlier, Jones had come to the defense of a potential fight victim. This is a poor choice of uh, words for this article here, but... uh, Potential fight victim? Fight victim, yes. A victim of a fight. As in, like, they knew that if he were to get in a fight, he'd get his ass beat? Uh, Presumably, it was someone (laughs) who was being accosted and was being attacked by other people. Oh, okay, okay. When I hear a potential fight victim, Uh, I think, like... Yeah, he gets in a fight. He's going to lose. Right. Uh, So police arrived after the aggressors had fled. In their report, the police called it a case of questionable use of pepper spray. I'm sensing a theme throughout. Uh, Oh, no. But the victim has like a utility belt and literally it's filled with nothing but pepper spray. spray. Yes. (laughs) And he's like, he's at home and he's like, he can't like keep everything in a neat row so he's like putting pepper spray on things accidentally like it's his whole personality <laughs> it's his whole series arc it's just pepper spray <laughs> it's just how he res- he responds to everything with pepper spray <laughs> someone's all some cooking th- some sort of steak or something and he's like oh shoot where's my pepper wait a minute <laughs> UPS i mean is at the door knock 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 open pepper spray take the box <laughs> <laughs> Girl approaches him at the bar, like, hey, you're sexy, pepper spray. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's just fundamentally. I'm a <laughs> yeah, he's fundamentally broken in literally every way that he thinks if anyone ever is approaching him, he needs pepper spray. <laughs> he just screams at the top of his lungs, I'm a superhero! And just sprays everybody in the room. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what you were saying. <laughs> In any event, uh, the victim later told the Seattle Times that Jones was indeed a hero who had saved him from, to Michael's uh, actual indication here, quote unquote, a potential beatdown. (laughs) Huh. Okay. Ah, no, the beatdown. So it was a a good choice of words. Okay. Yes. Uh, So November 27th, 2011, near the Belltown neighborhood of Seattle, Phoenix Jones and a crew followed a man accused of stabbing another man. They prevented the attacker from fleeing until the police arrived. So, by and large, you know, he's not going out there choking people out on the street. He's just attempting to help folks who are are not able to defend themselves until the police arrive. Totally commendable, other than the, you know, frequent abuse of pepper spray. But, you know, what are you going to do? People are mouthing off. You want to squirt them. Mm Mm-hmm. The water remembers. Indeed. Uh... At multiple times, essentially, he's just uh, shown stopping fights. This seems to be sort of the the most frequent occurrence that you will see. Uh, they intercept people. Now, this is the big one. On Tuesday, May 1st, 2012, a blogger reported that Phoenix Jones had pepper sprayed the Black Block protesters in downtown Seattle, although Jones denied this on his Twitter account. In an interview on the Bob Rivers show on May 2nd, Phoenix Jones asserted that while undercover with the protesters, several of them revealed to him a plot to bomb the city courthouse. According to Phoenix Jones, after telling the police and receiving no support whatsoever, he and other members of the Rain City superhero movement intercepted the protesters at the courthouse and acted in self-defense as the protesters began throwing rocks and bottles through the windows and glass doors of the courthouse. Have you told us who else was involved in the Rain City? Uh, I will do that once we finish the headlines. I figured you'd want to get a feel for some of their activities first before. Also, I give is you the a whole up. the whole bomb plot is that that's not bullshit? Oh, okay. not bullshit. Because it definitely seems lifted from. Again, I think all I can think about right now is Batman. Um, all right. Uh, I will say, I mean, now granted, this could be contrived in any number of ways. I did not make this up. So, to, yes, to really answer the question, fair. but, uh, he was joined by fellow costumed activists 
El Caballero and Midnight Jack during the foiling of this. I'll okay. get to the other we'll, ones we'll, in a moment okay. here. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, there's another one that I read the full article on in 2012 because this this line is so fun. It's Jones hit the headlines for engaging in mutual combat while Seattle police officers looked on. Yeah, it's my favorite and game. Essentially what happened is uh, he uh, approached a very inebriated individual who apparently was trying to drive. Uh, Jones attempted to stop him, and the gentleman did not take kindly to this. Let me guess, and then he pepper sprayed him? No, he did not pepper spray. <laughs> uh, the, Bullshit. The gentleman essentially said he was willing to fight. Jones decided he was as well, and so the Seattle Police Department just stood by, stepped back and watched as Jones kicked him in the head and knocked him unconscious immediately. Jesus. Uh, uh, <laughs> and then the police then uh, woke the guy up, made sure he was okay, and then they left before he tried to fight them as well. So they didn't even take him into custody. The, the embarrassment was punishment enough. <laughs> yes, which it, that was their rationale. I, the, you, as much as it is a joke, they're like, well, I think he learned his lesson and went on about their business. Uh, so yes that was taking place trying to, like trying to explain that altercation to your friends the next day like where like you have that lump on your head or like you know the bruises like what happened to you they're like some asshole in a mask knocked me the fuck out so i was wearing the the gentleman in question was referred to as the orange shirt guy throughout the article so there's like yeah orange shirt guy was just being belligerent and drunk and yelling at everybody is like yeah I think I had one too many and then, like, Spawn kicked my ass. I don't know what happened. <laughs> God damn you, McFarlane! <laughs> uh, it's akin to the uh, Birdman kicked my ass uh, for those of you around here. But we'll move on. <sighs> well. All right. If, if, there's, if there are any Wesley Willis aficionados amongst you, then they are laughing at that joke. Way. All right. So, uh... I think that should be sufficient to give you a good idea of what he's... Oh, uh, Sunday, September 20th, 2015 in Seattle, Jones spotted three men pistol whipping another man. And after alerting police, he charged the man holding the gun and knocked it out of his hand. Uh, the three were then arrested for assault, with one being charged with possession of a firearm by a felon. Okay. So there's, you know, some substantive things here. Uh, he offered to assist police in talking a man out of an 80-foot sequoia that he had climbed. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. No, wait, really? Yes. He tried doing... He said he would, uh, he would talk the man in the tree down if the police were willing to let him. And finally, the kicker. Uh, this one is not bullshit, just so that you can look this one up on your own. I figured Michael would appreciate it. Jones was seen and uh, noted as patrolling the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone in Seattle in June 2020. Ah, was he to really? Which the, yes, and the uh, individuals who were running the quote-unquote official Twitter account for the uh, area were saying that they did not condone superhero presence in the thing <laughs> either. <laughs> So no Which cops, is no great. superheroes. <laughs> Apparently, Jones was not welcomed in in the chop. So there is no so, no gods, no yeah. kings, only man. Indeed. So that is uh, Mr. Jones' exploits here. When asked if he would have someone arrested for smoking cannabis, Jones said he considered that a low priority and that he has no problem with people using drugs, but he wants drug dealers to sell somewhere else. He, and then he further yeah, said... I'm way too busy being high myself to care about if other people are also high. Well, keep that in your back pocket for a minute here, Chief. We'll get around to that later. So, and then he spray, then he pepper sprayed the <laughs> reporter and yes, Donald. yes, yeah. That reminds yes. me of the character in uh, in Night Vale, the or Pamela Winchell, who yes, uh, <laughs> who throws axes at the journalists <laughs> at reporters. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I think this is uh, definitely Phoenix Jones' M.O. is just pepper spray uh, <laughs> first, ask questions later. There's your next shirt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. So Jones' efforts would ultimately inspire other plucky citizens to take part in policing Seattle's streets, leading to oh, no. the foundation of the Rain City superhero movement. In July of 2011, local police recorded 20 citizens patrolling the city, the city, the city, the the, patrolling the city in superhero costumes using the names Thorn, Tank, Turbo, Buster Doe, 
Vibe, Green Reaper, The Mantis, Nitro, Gemini, No Name, who is my favorite of the entire group, No Name, okay. uh, Catastrophe, Thunder 88, and Penelope to join Mr. Phoenix Jones. Now, with all of those names, it could either be they belong to that group, or if the Fast and Furious franchise was set in Louisiana, there you go. <laughs> yes. Uh, there are others coming in as well. An individual who used the pseudonym Red Dragon has also claimed to be a member of the group. Uh, witnesses have reported that the group intervened in crimes on several occasions, while the police maintained they would prefer that individuals other than sworn officers not place themselves in danger and act as good witnesses instead. Uh, later members included, of course, uh, the previously named Red Dragon, Midnight Jack, as I alluded to earlier, which is yeah. all one word, which is fantastic, uh, Karma, Skyman, and El Caballero. Is at least one of those oh, names there's a lie? at least a handful of lies. There are there. there are several names in there that are not accurate. So is vibe is vibe bullshit? Vibe is in fact bullshit. Ooh! Uh actually no, that would be better. I would have loved it if that was an actual like guy and like the thing he would do is he would just run up to someone and yell vibe check and like punch him in that's the face. That's what made or me think about Louisiana. I was like, that's definitely some dumbass <laughs> DJ's name. Like you DJ know what's vibe. funny? <laughs> Uh, Vibe is a, a DC Comics character. Is it really? What? Yes. Look it up. What's his What's his power? He vibes. Just, just... He he vibrates. Oh, he. Okay. Uh... I'm thinking like vibe check. Like, <laughs> stop, stop being so I don't really so know white, what that kid. means. It's sorry. So hey, party all right. Cool enough. Uh, the <laughs> final individual. I'm at any any other stabs at at some of the names here. No. I want to say Skyman, but I I hope these I hope that's a real uh, name. Skyman is a real name. Yep. Okay. Good. Uh, good. And the final addition to the list is Purple Rain, with Rain spelt R E I G N, who worked mainly on intelligence and advocacy against domestic violence. I want to say it, but I just feel too slap happy. Uh, please tell me that it was rain spelled that way yes that is that Aww. is uh that one is not bs that is i was good. hoping he'd be some sort of like jimmy hendrix like kind of like oh that's did yep. he just miss purple the rain. mark too huh purple rain wasn't jimmy what? hendrix i thought it was it's not wasn't it it's no that's not. purple oh, haze shit. Pur oh, purple rain fuck. uh is prince oh, my friend god jesus damn it Christ, you're right michael Some fucking shit man i'm drunk i'm upset with myself i i've actually just stopped listening to him john so i appreciate that you're actually paying attention <sighs> yeah it's hard to All tune right. out it sounds just like one hey. big pepper spray can yeah yeah <laughs> i actually uh you know jokes on me that's my power I i've had michael muted for the last 10 minutes so i i don't even know what he's saying he's hardly a person that's what uh. we're trying to say Yes, without question. So, the group's <laughs> primary claim to fame was stopping four people who pretended to be law enforcement agents from robbing a blind man whose pockets they purported to be lawfully searching. <laughs> what? Uh, Red Dragon's notes uh, indicated that the group had also stopped carjackings, helped stranded vehicles on the highways, stopped people from drunk driving, chased down and aided in the apprehension of a sex offender. Just one. Uh, and even escorted people <laughs> to their cars late at night. Uh, they've dealt with a man making threatening statements while swinging a golf club. Uh, and then on uh, May Day 2012, El Caballero, Midnight Jack, and Phoenix Jones confronted vandals damaging the old federal courthouse. Ha! Hmm. Huh. And then Sorrow. <gasps> on May the 29th of 2014... Phoenix Jones officially declared that the Rain City superhero movement was over based on the death of the founding member, Turbo. Uh, Turbo was shot three times whilst he, Jones, and Thorne attempted to apprehend a group of armed assailants fleeing a drive through liquor store in Yarrow Point, which is a suburb of Seattle. Uh, Va he was attended to by the emergency response crews, but was DOA at UW Medical Center. Uh, due to his passing, Jones elected to officially disband the group of amateur crime fighters. Uh, his quote is, it got too real. Uh, we're not just out here for the fun and the show and tell. This is real life. I have to find myself ostentatiously nodding at everything that crack dealers are saying. 
hoping that if the shooting starts, they'll remember my nods and make the effort to shoot around me. That is too fucked up for an average man's mental state to tolerate. Yeah, I would say so. True. Also, you you mentioned it before, but like, Kick-Ass came out before they did this. Um, no, uh, I think it was around the exact same time, to be completely honest. I thought Kick-Ass came out in like 2009, 2010. Yes, and he started in 2010. But, but that's what I'm saying is like, anyway, it's it, similar. similar it, it was they're, they're, around they're the same time. To, yeah, yeah. Now, I so will say the film came out in obvious. 2010. The um, comic books were out long before that. So, yes, it could be very evocative of having right. seen that. Uh, there's no one saying he did not take his inspiration from this. Right. All right. And then his personal injuries. Uh, Jones reports having been stabbed with a knife while trying to intervene with a drug dealer and a resident, damaging part of his costume, which had to be repaired. Uh, he has told police that his ballistic vest helped to stop a bullet during the previous aforementioned incident whilst Turbo was being shot. Uh, in 2011, Jones claimed to have sustained an injury while attempting to break up a fight, uh, as one of the men pulled a gun on him while the other one kicked him, breaking his nose. Uh, this incident was never reported to police and was treated by Jones' private doctor. And finally, in summation, Jones' arrest record. Who? Uh, the Seattle City Attorney Pete Holmes has called Jones a deeply misguided individual. Uh, in October of 2011, Jones was arrested for his investigation of an assault after using pepper spray to break up an alleged fight. This is the woman hitting him with her heels. Uh, he spent approximately seven hours in jail before boasting his 30, uh, boasting, before posting his $3,800 bail. Uh, no charges were filed and the case was dropped later that month. Uh, Jones appeared in court wearing a black and gray striped shirt over his costume on October 13th, 2011. Oh, man. They the didn't make court him take officer, it off? The court officer asked Jones to remove his mask, and he complied, then putting the mask back on after the hearing. Uh, Jones then spoke with reporters and removed his mask again to reveal his identity as Ben Fodor. Fodor stated that he would continue patrolling the city. I will continue to patrol with my team, probably tonight. Uh, in addition to being Phoenix Jones, I'm also Ben Fodor, father and brother. I'm just like everybody else. The only difference is that I try to stop crime in my neighborhood and everywhere else. I think I have to look toward the future and see what I can do to help the city. Noble words. On January 9th of 2020, Jones was arrested for allegedly selling MDMA to an undercover police officer. Oh, no. What? Oh, no. At oh, how the turntables. Oh, man. <sighs> uh, at the time of his arrest, police alleged that he and his accomplice were also in possession of four grams of cocaine. Oh. Aww. He Harvey dented. Indeed. <laughs> Only to find himself the villain. Uh, so there you are. Uh, the inglorious exploits of our good friend, Mr. Phoenix Jones. Man, I really, I, once we're done tonight, I think I'm going to do a little, like, YouTube dive and just see, like, I, I want to see some of those videos for sure. It's, it's worth checking out, I assure you. It's, uh, something I've been fascinated with because he was, when he first started out, I remember hearing about him on Hollywood Babylon, uh, which is a, a Kevin Smith, Ralph Garman podcast that they do. But, um, they did refer to him as a guy who dressed up like Batman and would go out and, and fight crime. Okay. And it's it's a really easy thing to draw a parallel toward. Uh, any further stabs at some lies here while we're uh, contemplating? No, I think Michael got three or four. Mm. Penelope was that was that a uh, bull? It is bullshit? not bullshit. Penelope was one of the uh, the Rain City superheroes. Okay. I have nothing then. Okay. So, uh, the first one you caught, of course, is the crew of clandestine crime fighters seeking to end the corruption, compromising world safety. Uh, so good. Crime Prevention Brigade. That's, uh, that's a handle everyone wants to self apply. Uh, of course, the increasing escalation in theatricality from the criminal element, which is something you hear in all the Batman comics, of course. Uh, yes. 
The his quote, however, saying that criminals will cower behind masks for anonymity while he and his associates do not is not uh, something he said. That is a lie. <laughs> um, hi, okay. Him okay. also claiming that it takes courage to wear a mask, whereas, you know, crooks don't have courage to wear a mask with a moniker is also not real. And uh, uh, you did catch the they aren't uh, a collective of kooks in suits, I think, was uh, something that we had pointed out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, Phoenix Jones did not call his uh, brother Blue Corduroy at all. <laughs> uh, Which Blue... I made fun of. I, sh- I, was, I was sniffing it out. Well, he did call someone else. Uh, he was at a conference where he attempted to stop somebody, and there was a gentleman, uh, Jack Hitt who does N- NPR, I think. Um, Fuck off. He, his name was not Jack Hit. His name is Jack Jacket? Hitt. Jacket? Uh, uh-huh. Jacket on, jacket off. Little, little Johnny in his paper castle. Castle, uh, yeah. Uh, so Jack Hit was dubbed Blue Corduroy by Jones when he officially deputized him by having him hold his backpack oh, while fuck. he chased down someone. Hold my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it takes to be a superhero my friend yeah you're my superhero wife now bitch you little blue car- corduroy looking motherfucker uh-huh <laughs> shit uh you little cum covered kumquat <laughs> <laughs> all right um so there were not 20 members of the uh the rain city movement it was 10 initially uh the names that i made up were vibe of course nitro Tank and <laughs> oh. Turbo. Uh, no, oh. Turbo, no. So Turbo so, didn't die? Turbo didn't die. Uh, so those are um, American Gladiators names that I pulled <laughs> by and large. Uh, Vibe is the only one who I did not run. Uh, you know, I, that was, I figured would be fun enough and you guys wouldn't have heard of it. But uh, so these are the real names. Thorn was real. Buster Doe and it is Buster... Doe, D O E. Two names. Okay. Buster Doe. Uh, Buster Doe. Uh, Green Reaper was real. The Mantis is real. Gemini, who's also an American gladiator, which is what I was laughing at. That's why I went with the other ones because, like, there's a guy named Gemini in this. Really? Okay. Uh, no Name is real. Catastrophe. Thunder 88. Penelope, Red Dragon, uh, Midnight Jack, Karma, Sky, Skyman, and El Caballero as well as Purple Rain, are all of the individuals who eventually wound up being in the movement. Like I was telling you, like I've watched so much Venture Brothers lately that all of those character names make perfect sense to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what's funny is the initial lie that I had written out was that Vibe was the one who was shot, so I had to change that on the fly and fly uh, Turbo in. Uh, and so thankfully, I managed to, to skirt that one in there. But someone uh, actually died or no one died? Nope, no one died. Jones just up and called it quits in 2014. He's like, it's over. Probably That's all they the said. MDMA and Coke. But no, that was later on. That was that was six years after. That was no, this yeah, year. That was like, this maybe year. that was the point. Like, maybe like at that point, he's like, can't oh, beat they him. found out he was into MDMA, and so you know they were going to turn him in, and he disbanded the group and decided to go off. Yeah, he went off the grid. So it's like the boys here where he's, you know, a super villain now instead of a super. I was going to say, like, without like, please don't no spoilers, but you guys were talking about it. And I watched, I think I'm two episodes into the whole show and I'm really, really enjoying it so far. It's great. The books are also really fantastic. You would appreciate Same the comics. Same dude who did Preacher. Correct. Uh, right. And he also did a lot of huh. Hellblazer. So um, his stuff is very entertaining. I, I appreciate it. Is that on Amazon? It is. Uh, yes. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, his sweet. You can just tell, like, just from the show, I can tell it's the same dude who wrote the source material for those mm-hmm. other other sh- concepts. Yes, he enjoys potty humor, just a scum. Very much so. I mean, when when one of the through lines is shoving a device or explosive device up someone's ass. Uh, yes. Yeah. He also uh, eventually wound up. It's Garth Ennis. He used to. Yeah. He did um, uh, a run of Punisher Max. And one of the villains is a Frankenstein-looking motherfucker with um, breasts. <laughs> of course, it so is. Why he, he, he as in like he's Frankenstein. He's a, he's monster, a huge, jacked-up, but... muscle-bound man who got breast implants. Fantastic. But he's got like a flat okay. top, and yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Cool. So um, Jones' <laughs> actual quote of "It got too real. We're not out here just for fun and just for show and tell. This is real life." All of that was actual, like a true quotation. 
The only thing I added was the that's too fucked up for the average man's mental state to tolerate. Uh, but oh, he I did say the whole bit. Own little pepper nope. anyway. Yeah, I thought that was just a comment nope. on your own part. Uh, and... Well, technically it was, but yeah, I added it in uh-huh. as the uh, uh, part tail end there. So I believe that is all that I had for you on the lie department. But uh, to be believed, some of these things are far more elaborate than I would have expected otherwise. Yeah, no, that True. was awesome. I uh, had no idea who this person was. So I'm excited to go look him up. Well, I'm excited to uh, to share this video. If you want to, we can actually, uh, I will put the video in the chat here and we can watch it amongst ourselves just so that the, the group can uh, share in our seeing Mr. Phoenix Jones in person. Oh, why not? Indeed. So we are going to uh, go at uh, three, two, one and play. I need to start sticking it down. So we have the gentleman between the window Dan, who is illustrating strip. how the Dan criminals were trying to steal his car. Before he finished dialing. From the right, this guy comes dashing in. <laughs> He's very enthusiastic about the man who's dashing in in a rubber suit. suit and starts chasing this is like a chab, too. What Dan didn't know is just and here about is Phoenix and Jones. Oh, yes. Give it to here me. Here he is in the comic book store, oh, going through the oh, secret shit, panel. Oh, shit, you weren't kidding. Oh, no. what the fuck? He looks like a really and shitty <laughs> cosplayer. Oh, my God. Oh, man. That is a glorious bulletproof oh, outfit that he's got there. But he sounded familiar to us. We oh, my God. Damn. Damn. Eight members yep. of That's beautiful. Isn't that a nice, a nice mask? Fighting movement. It is his yes, super he's suit. A, he's the I hero that the city needs. Not that, that he does not have, have those abs underneath the costume. You, brother. How you doing? Oh, he does. <sighs> what? Wow, that's insane, man. <laughs> Remember, he's an MMA person. So What's MMA? Nightstick. <laughs> and he showed him the bulletproof Oh shit, that was a cattle prod. Yes, it is a taser <laughs> nightstick. <laughs> but then it was oh, time geez. for Phoenix to get back out on I, the streets. Uh, Maybe not expected quite his Superman, voice to sound way different. But an extraordinary one. Yes. So when I he just the put on this voice. He just kind sound. of sounds yeah, like this. I symbolize that the average person doesn't have to I symbolize yeah, he sounds like He sounds yeah, like an accountant. He does. In Cairo 7 Eyewitness News. Uh, he's, a, he's a father and a crime fighter, gentlemen. Oh I mean, my god. He, so that's Mr. Damn. Phoenix Jones, uh, as uh, brought to us by CBS News. Uh, we hope you have all watched that with the link in the show notes there. But uh, that's a super suit, gentlemen. That was fantastic. Man. Also, that's the first time we've ever done that on the fly. There is no preparation to watch that clip. And that worked really well, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Huh. Uh, here's the other fun thing about it. Not one time did anybody over the course of this, even though we got through the no capes reference, when I have said super suit, there isn't anybody who's been, where's my super suit? I was leaving that for Michael, eh. but, uh, you know, he probably wouldn't understand the reference anyway. Uh, I've only seen the first one, not the second. So, you know, there, there you go. There's your disappointment. I'm not shocked. I, exactly. <laughs> all, I, all I have is... <laughs> what do you expect All I have me? is disappointment. <laughs> At this point, I'd be more surprised to feel, uh, like, you know, encouraging. You know, like... <laughs> I mean, I've been disappointing since the day I was conceived, so... What is... Is Shane there fucking you your mom too? Did <laughs> maybe? Uh, I will neither confirm nor deny anyone's, uh, you know, mother's being in danger around me. See, this makes the will they won't they even more awkward when it's plot twist. He's my we father. Have, we have I almost make a something whole, that unfortunate. <laughs> a, almost a whole calendar year left to go to find out if they will or if they uh, won't. We won't, I guarantee it. Um, and, uh, <laughs> uh, Steven actually did give me, uh, a little bit of a, uh, an infusion Steven. of material for the, uh, Heil Cumslingers. Uh, yeah. apparently oh, no. there is a text that he was referring to that is, uh, it's like the Magdalene, uh, I'm forgetting. Uh, I, I'm thinking the Magdalene Grimoire as I've described previously, which is from Sandman. But, um, there's a, something that is the gospel according to Mary Magdalene, where it, there is a passage described as Christ taking a woman out of his body, like pulling a woman out of his body and copulating with it and then forcing Mary to take his seed. And so then there's something about like the, the Magdalene sacrament is like you take the blood for the wine and his semen is the bread <laughs> or, or the body. 
I just finished. I will get the uh, material from Steven and then I can share it with you yeah, on air it. so we can read this. Um, before we, we end at any, or end the episode in general, I have an announcement to make to both of you. So I wanted to catch you guys off guard. Uh, Intrigued. But, but jumping from what you just said, I just finished reading my first Kurt Vonnegut book. I just finished uh, Slaughterhouse Five. And what you're talking about very vaguely reminds me of something in the last 50 pages. Cause the, the, You've read it. The book jumps all over the place. But he's talking about someone telling him about, uh, you know, Christ's time and alluding to the fact that someone went or like the Romans came and made Joseph make a cross. And then they hung the rabble rouser on the cross that Joseph made. Uh, kind of sounds a little similar there to me. But the announcement. Uh, how did I- you like the how did you like the uh, the book, by the way? You know, what's really it was really awesome. One, I really enjoyed it. I want to read more Vonnegut. I like his tone. Um, it is also the origin of the Children's Crusade. So for the Marco that, fans out there. That was a big thing that tickled me. But also it's reading an author that want to influence a bunch of other author- authors that I really enjoy. Like, I can definitely see where Chuck Palahniuk got some of his voice. That, In my opinion, they're super similar on how they, how they write and, like, technically right you know mm-hmm. short sentences dark humor super satirical right. outlook and, and everything so i enjoy it's it. brilliant it's a it's a great book i love it to death do you have a recommendation for my second vonnegut either of you uh, i heard cat's cradle is good cat's cradle is fantastic uh i have time quake i can let you borrow if you're inclined oh, yeah i like free stuff <laughs> so yeah, uh, but no, uh, Cat's Cradle is great. The, the, you can't really go wrong with Vonnegut stuff. His later stuff gets a little uh, further eccentric, but okay. it's still vastly entertaining. Uh, I have found it. So, Ephanius uh, of Salamis records that the Greater Questions of Mary contained an episode in which Jesus took Mary Magdalene up to the top of a mountain, where he pulled a woman out of his side and engaged in sexual intercourse with her. Which is apparently the first documented blow-up doll. Yeah, for uh, real. As far as I can tell. And then, upon ejaculating, Jesus drank his own semen and told Mary, Thus we must do, that we may live. Upon hearing this, Mary instantly fainted, to which Jesus responded by helping her up and telling her, O oh, thou of little faith, wherefore <laughs> didst thou doubt? Um, so is this the original point of spitters or quitters? I believe so, <laughs> apparently. Uh, if Jesus is willing to take a, a shot of his own sacrament, uh, you know, everyone else should be willing hey, to do likewise. Hey, Michael, can you return next week with an episode on cum therapy? Uh, there actually is at least one person I know that has used, uh, some sort of version is of cum therapy. Is it you? If you want, I can... <laughs> no. It was it was some sort of YouTube channel that talks about like that talks trash about people like that and then like it was some lady that that's yeah, her therapy. Been, She's I've like been a, on Reddit. I've seen the women that are like, like, "Yep, that. I just collect cum in a vial, I'll just rub it all over my face and it's the best skincare routine I've ever had." No, no, no. She she puts it in a smoothie. I'll I'll report back. I'll report yeah, back. Someone did ask me for for popsicles yes. as you'll recall. Yeah, that is right. So uh, so to finish this True. up, also uh, the claim is that the uh, the Borborites is uh, described here. That is who we're referring to. For those who want to play the home game, okay, I'll include this in the show notes. They were inspired by Sethian- Sethianism, and that elements of sexual sacramentalism formed an important role in their rituals. He asserts that the Borborites engaged in a version of the Eucharist in which they would smear their hands with menstrual blood and semen and consume them as the blood and body of Christ, respectively. Hot. He also alleges that whenever one of the women in their church was experiencing their monthly period, uh, they would t- take her menstrual blood and everyone in the church would eat it as part of a sacred ritual. Yeah, it makes sense. Sounds legit. Yeah. They were also claimed to uh, extract fetuses from pregnant women and consume them, particularly if the women accidentally became pregnant during related sexual rituals. I feel like I ruined a perfectly good episode by bringing this up in the course of uh, just ca- casual discussion here. No, I I have already forgotten I think it, it really tests uh, our retention ship. So <laughs> if you're still here, yeah. thank you. By um, all means. Yes. yes. So Shane, Michael... 
the thing that I, it's kind of a curveball, but it's, I've changed my stance on something. Uh, are you down to a four point stance now? Yeah. I'm ready to be hurt again. And if okay. Michael found another fanfic, I, I would be, okay. I would do it. <gasps> I'm ready to be, I'm ready oh to be hurt my. again. I, I, I already have one step. I'm already one step ahead oh, no. of you, actually, um, because now I'm going to announce this on air so that Shane now has Uh-oh. to do it. Um, I have assembled a collection of four different fan fictions that we can let you, the Don't listener, to yes, poll, you we have no one that wants to vote. <laughs> Hey, if one person votes, that's all Shane we need. Shane does not count. Um, I don't count. You don't use social media. Checkmate, atheist. Exactly. So I definitely don't count. Um, I triple don't count. But I will um, set... Well, it's actually in our I doc. I was going to say, can't count and don't count are entirely different things, Michael. <laughs> True. Um, I refuse to count. But the uh, it is a choice between... I I can... You know what? I will actually it's recount also, them real quickly. Hold cunt, on a second. by the way. I, Yes, yes, And for, yes. while Michael's doing little... that, uh, for those who are not aware, we have finally put together the comprehensive coverage of My Immortal as performed by the Disinformed Podcast cast. And that's available on Bandcamp.com right now. You can go snag it and listen to it. And it is three glorious hours <laughs> of us just prattling nonsense. And I listened to it. In its entirety, in a sitting with uh, Miss Melissa, and it was as inane on the you know twelfth pass as it was on the first oh, one. Fun. But it made a <laughs> little bit more. It was a little more cohesive when you can listen to it all in a row. Shane, Michael, did you like the TikTok that I that we put on the Instagram page? I wanted to hurt it. I'll say that because uh, you're so sexually. I aroused. don't believe in TikTok. Far from it. Oh, no, I did see that. Yes, yeah. yes, I was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Remember, the goth girl's like me, it, not inverse. It's uh, Also, you know, I yeah. while Michael's looking, I have a little teaser. I have found my topic that I, I want to present on uh, in October. <gasps> and it's not my dog's well, having a seizure downstairs. I was going to say Frank is excited about it, I can tell. Um, I want to talk about the elevator to hell. Ooh, it's will it take you two miles down to a subterranean home that you are now going to get to live in? Yes, very Lovecraftian. Uh, no, I. Yeah. It is uh, an urban legend on uh, a certain. T- <gasps> yeah, Ooh. so that'll be my October topic. Also, I am working on finding for the month of October new intro music just for October that sounds nice and spooky. Oh, okay. Well done. Mm, Well, I also have an interesting um, urban legend that I was going to throw in. It is one that involves the interesting physicist. Who? I mean, it's an urban legend, so. Okay. Well, Michael, did you find those fan fictions yet, or are we just going to end the episode? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I I literally, it took me two seconds. uh, It's on our combined doc that we have that. Yeah, sorry, I don't. You only reference whenever I post things on there. Um, So, the potential fan fics. Uh, crazy, stupid, insane <laughs> love, which is a Cthulhu slash fic. Uh, the description I wrote was Cthulhu meets some other elder gods for a spicy rom rom com. Okay. Oh, good. Yes. Uh, the second one is My Immortal, the sequel. It's an unofficial fan sequel written the same prose oh, God. as the yeah, original. That's I can't do it twice. Now. Yeah. Let's fuck that. Uh, that's fair. Um, speaking of such, uh, I'm not okay. <laughs> uh. It's Ravens. Yes, so the I, I've seen that, that one. Yeah, Ravens fanfic. Uh, it's very similar, but what I have read on it is that it has significantly better quality. So it does. It's not as the writing is better. I won't say the story is better because I'm not sure about that. But the overall quality of the writing is much better. Ooh. And then the last one we have mentioned in passing: uh, Hogwarts School of Prayer and Miracles. Um, the Christian version of Harry Potter, written by a housewife, which sounds very so. entertaining to me. Okay, so but, uh, knee-jerk reaction. I was gonna say Lovecraft, but yes, the 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 Christian version of Harry Potter, I think, would sound would be pretty funny, and it's it's coherent. Well, yes, uh, mostly it's it's. I mean, anything compared to my immortal is coherent. So, the uh, Christian housewife, bored Christian mm-hmm, housewife, which is important um, to emphasize. So we're gonna be doing an audiobook yes. for Twilight. Got um, it. Oh, please. 
uh, I um, think uh, I like Michael's idea of actually, you know, positing this for those who are going to be subjected to listen to it. I'll I'll go with this. We'll throw up a a brief Twitter thing. John, you can tell the the four people you finally came around to actually telling about our podcast and yeah. uh, see if they want to contribute, and uh, it'll it'll work out hey, well. It's for at all least five by now, and they are five oh. very semi important, if not super important people. Well, I've told you, your mom still can't listen. Well, not with... Uh, I don't want to ruin a good thing. Fair. Um, I will say that at least three of the four are uh, fairly short length. Mm. They won't be anywhere near as long as um, My Immortal. I don't know how long I'm not okay and, is. Uh, What about the girth? So, yeah, girth is, er, girth is more important than length. Pretty girthy. I agree. At least that's what my mom told yes, you. No, uh, uh, she did several times. <laughs> um, it's uh, in the famed today. words of uh, Ron White: "I will not touch bottom, but I will stretch out the sides." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't be yeah. afraid of the cheese so, wheel. So, for context too, for for our listeners, I think what we agreed on is that it won't be a tag on to the end of our episodes. It would be a new day. We'd probably record yes. it in the same yes. session, but it. Our oh, episodes yeah, yeah, from yeah. here on out, even with a fanfic involved, uh, the fanfic is always going to be a different day. I think what we talked about in an ideal world would be Monday would be our actual episode proper. Wednesday mm-hmm. would be our fanfic audiobook read. And then Friday is our Disinformed After Dark on YouTube. We can discuss it. Well, we'll do what we usually do, which is just figure it out as we do it. So, yeah, that tends to be mm-hmm. the way we go about Sounds it. Sounds good to me. Uh, I call that uh, Watkinsing. Very much so. We uh, we are very improvisational in our household. You should know that, by the way, that my mom Griffin rides. Not really. <laughs> she's very methodical no. about it. Plans it out. Sends him a list of the things she wants to do the night. Uh, prior. Listen, we have been using the sex swing in its you know full and and varied positions for years now. So I mean it it works much better that way. You don't get as much of the chafing. Well, I'm I'm glad that you're treating her right. I'm trying. You're the best stepfather I've never had. Indeed. (laughs) And you're the best stepson that I could never have wanted. I'm gonna cry. Amen. Yes, yes. You and all my other knuckle children just (laughs) disappointing me left and right. Gentlemen, is there any other nonsense we need to throw out here since we've already posted our plugs earlier for those of you who are still around? No. No, I'm good. No, not at all. End me, please. Uh, well, for another spectacular episode, we shall end by donning our super suits. And uh, we will finish by saying, firstly, John, I like your style, dude. Did you have to use so many swear words? Yeah, I like yours too, man. You got that whole cowboy thing going. <laughs> All right, for the glorious disembodied and Michael's just lost out the, like a babe in the woods... Is that hateful? You're eight? hateful. Eight. Uh, so, uh, for for the disinformed podcast, I am Shane. I'm John, and I'm Michael. So long and good night. So long and good night. <laughs> <laughs>